Hello class, this is Ms. Chikoy here with Graphing Review. So on, in reviewing graphing, we're going to go over how to make a proper graph, um, how do you go about plotting your data, and then once you have your data plotted, determining a line of best fit, which includes finding the slope and the intercept for that line. The part of the homework this will help you on would be part one, because in part one you have to do your own experiment, and I do want you to have data as well as a proper graph for it, as well as part two in which I just have you give you data and ask you to make good graphs and find the slopes and intercepts on them. All right, so for making a proper graph, first you need data. So we have some data that has energy used and distance run. So one of the first things you can do is create a title for your graph. So for example, the title for this, you could just be, generally you just use your two types of data to so be energy used versus distance. You could even shorten this, just distance versus energy or energy versus distance. But you just need something simple for the title. From there, you want to look at your data. So when you're looking at your data, you want to figure out which one is going to be your x and which one is going to be your y. Um, in this case, you can see that these are very evenly spaced numbers, which is one hint that this should be your x. So the reason this should be your x or horizontal is a couple of reasons. One, it's evenly spaced. But the main reason it's evenly spaced is because it is the independent variable. You don't use the energy and then figure out how much you ran. That's not really what this one says. This says we ran a distance and then we figured out how much energy was used. So we started with our distance run as our independent variable and then figured out how much energy we used for our dependent variable. Since this is your dependent variable, this is going to be your y. Remember, y is your vertical. So once you've determined which one is which, you want to label your graph so that it shows that. So your y, and I'm just going to shorthand this, you can just say, instead of energy used, you can just say this is energy. And then for your x, you can say that this, again, is your distance. Hopefully, if you are in my class last year, if you are in physics last year, you know that these are still missing something. You must put your units. If you do, units are very important in physics. If you do not put your units, it is very easy to get an incorrect answer. Make sure you're using the right units. So distance is our is standardly measured in meters. And energy, if you remember chemistry, is standardly measured in joules. All right, so just a quick recap. So first, we make a title, then you label your axes. Next, you need to write in your numbers for your axes. So now you need to number it. When you are numbering, it is very important that you make sure it makes sense. For example, if we are counting up to 10, you don't for your distance run, you don't want 9 to be here and then the rest of this is just empty space. It's a very bad use of your space. So more likely, you can see this is pretty, we have a fair amount of space for this, so you want to space it out as much as possible. To, and this gives a bit of a trial and error. There's no necessarily wrong answer. The wrong answer is using up very little or not being able to make it fit. So if we count by twos, it becomes pretty obvious that we can at least fit up to nine here. So you go one, two, three, and then you don't necessarily have to write all of them as long as it's obvious which each one is. Uh, same thing for energy used. We know we have to go up to about 700. We're obviously not going to count by ones if we want to count to 700. So again, think about what is a reasonable way to count. In this case, definitely hundreds. 
Alright, as I said before, it's a bit of trial and error. I realized counting by twos wasn't going to quite cut it. So I ended up going by 200 every three spaces instead in the green. Alright, so once you have that, then you need to go and plot your points. Alright, so remember when you are plotting your points, you find your x, for in this case 9, and you want to go up all the way to where your 660 would hit. So it's not quite to 700, it's actually probably really close to this line. So that would be your first point, so I'm going to go and do all of these points. Alright, so just remember, always be careful when you're plotting your points. Um, next step is now this is where you want to figure out the things about your graph. So you want to start looking at, this is where you're going to do your line of best fit. So after this, I'm going to go a little more into what I'm really going to want, because this, for the most part, I'm going to want you to do two lines of best fit. And I'll show you what that means in a second. But looking at this graph, there's really one line of best fit that's possible. And remember, line of best fit means you're going to draw a line, not connect the dots. So I do not want you to connect your dots, although in this case it almost makes a complete line. But you want to take some sort of straight edge and... Um, you need to find something here that'll work. That should work. So you want to take some sort of straight edge, lay it down, and if they're, these are pretty straight, but you don't necessarily need it to go all through all the lines. In fact, I think that line's a little high. I'm going to lower it a little. So you want to have the same amount of points above the line as you do below the line, it's a little better. So you can see that it's not necessarily touching, really, but it's very obvious the only really line you can get out of it. Maybe your line, you could say maybe it might be a little bit above or below, but that's about your line of best fit. So once you get your line of best fit, you want to get two things, your slope and your intercepts. So I'm going to clear some space here to make that possible to find both of those. Alright, so first we're going to do slope. Hopefully somebody has beat into your head at some point. That slope is rise over run. And so what that means is you want to figure out your rise or your change in elevation, aka your y, your change in y over your change in your run in that this case, your change in x. Uh, this little thing, if you haven't seen it before, is a delta. It means change. So you're going to need to find your change in y and your change in x. And to do this, you want to pick an easy point at the end, but not necessarily a point. You want to pick a point on your line, not one of your original plotted points. You want to pick one towards the beginning and one towards the end. For example, this line looks, pr looks pretty on the nose. This is a good place to pick. As well as, mm -hmm, not as many easy lines later. Although it looks actually, if I had continued this, this would have lined up perfectly. So I'm going to pick those two. So this is at the 10 mark, and it went up to, that would be about 730. Then we want to go back to our other points. This is at the 2 and at the 1. 130. All right, and then from here, you want to figure out your, we're doing our rise first. This is our change in y, so we take 730, the final one, minus the initial, 130. 
over your initial or your final x minus your initial x of 2. Do the math, that gets us 600 on the top, 8 on the bottom. And if you do the division, we're going to get 75. Better 5. Hmm, close enough. And for your units, that would be joules over meters. So your slope in this case would be 75 joules over meters. Next, we need the intercept, although remember this when I mean intercept, I'm talking about the y-intercept. And on this one, there's not a lot to do. It's pretty obvious that our y-intercept here is at 0, 0, the origin, which makes sense. Um, because the intercept is where it meets, and if we're thinking about what's actually happening in this graph, the idea of the amount of distance we run versus the energy we used, if we have gone zero meters, we probably use zero joules to do it. As in, if we haven't used any energy, we haven't gone anywhere yet. So, alright, now I'm going to go... This, mm, these data points were rather neat, probably because I picked them, so they would be. But your data art is not always going to be like that. So we're going to do one case just to show you what your data may look like and what I would want you to do with having more than one line of best fit. Alright, so in this completely random number that I made up, it's distance versus time. You're going to be seeing a lot of these. So when you're finding a line of best fit, there's a couple things you should make sure. First, Check that it's a line. For example, if your data points are looking like that, it's probably not a line, but an exponential. So be sure that there's actually a shape involved. Or for example, if your line numbers are all over the place, there's really no shape there. So you have to make sure that there's some sort of shape involved in it. If there's no shape, no line of best fit should be drawn. So looking at these data points, so they're much more varied than our last step. So what you're going to be doing in these cases is you're going to actually be making two lines of best fit. So you want to think about what your upper bound is. So you want to think what's the largest the line could possibly be, like the highest. For example, I would not expect the line to be higher than that. And then you also want to do a lower bound one. Like I would not expect the line to be lower than this. It could be something in between. All right, and I sort of mentioned on the last one, the last one it wasn't as obvious, so I'm actually just going to go back for a sec, is do not play connect the dots. If you play connect the dots, you're going to get some really weird shape, which has nothing to do with your data. That's the absolute opposite I want. I want. You should have, in this case, two clear lines showing your upper and lower possible bounds. So for each one of these lines, you would therefore find a slope and find an intercept for both of those lines. The idea that your intercept must be somewhere in between here, and your slope, and actually these slopes look relatively similar, but your slope must be something in between that. And I guess what I'm really talking about here is uncertainty. Uncertainty. T, I'm missing an R. No, that, there's my R. Uncertainty. So the idea of uncertainty is it's how correct you think you are, how perfect. We're also going to talk about how correct your instruments are. You cannot be more correct than your instruments. We'll talk a little bit about significant figures. I'm not going to go crazy on them, but you should have an idea of how many significant figures you should have in your answer. So we will be talking about this 
a fair amount when you come back, but I just want you to be constantly thinking about it, not say calculating, but the idea of how sure are you of this intercept, how sure are you of these slopes, how off do you think you could be, and how close to the real answer you are, because this is really important in true experimentation. They always have to list their uncertainty with their data, and sometimes the uncertainty can be so far that, you know, maybe their data is not necessarily relevant anymore because it's just too uncertain. So don't worry too much about it, but we will be talking more about it your first week back. Hopefully this was helpful, and join us for the next video.